A large number of protesters have taken to the streets of Islamabad to protest U.S. drone attacks in Pakistan's tribal areas. The protesters chanted stop drone attacks while torching a mock unmanned aircraft. The escalating U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan have angered tribal leaders as well as religious political parties in the country. Some Pakistani lawmakers have been calling for the blocking of NATO's supply lines in protest. U.S.-led forces bring in 40 percent of their supplies from for Afghanistan through Pakistan. Now, the U.S. has admitted to using an airfield in southern Ethiopia to carry out drone missions. U.S. officials have confirmed in Washington Post report that the CIA is using the Arba Minch Air Base. The site is part of a network of secret drone bases the U.S. has in the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. But contrary to the report, Washington insists that the drones are not armed and are only used for surveillance purposes. The U.S. Air Force has reportedly spent millions of dollars on renovating the airfield in Ethiopia to house a fleet of Reaper drones. The unmanned aircraft can be armed with Hellfire missiles and precision-guided bombs. Washington has increasingly turned to drones to carry out covert strikes in several countries, including Pakistan, Yemen and Somalia. Well, to discuss the issue more, I'm joined all the way from Washington by Michael Malouf, former Pentagon official. Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, Mr. Malouf, uh, first of all, uh, some say right. that it seems that this drone issue is becoming more like a strategy to implement some kind of future idea or plan. Now, as a former Pentagon official, how do you see it? Because it's spread into countries that one could hardly imagine. Well, it's a um, secret program. It's uh, designed to be a uh, covert program, as you pointed out. And I think it uh, reflects the fact that the United States is uh, pulling back from the Middle East generally, has, is also pulling back uh, somewhat from the war on terror. Uh, and, uh, and so they're resorting to these drones, and they're keeping it purposely secret. Uh, and that's, that, in turn, is masking the, uh, the number of civilian casualties that are occurring and, and which are actually on the rise. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, that the, the that uh, the Imam uh, Awali Awaki was uh, killed by a drone attack in uh, Yemen uh, speaks volumes of uh, the extent to which drones are being used, uh, whether they're from launched from Ethiopia or anywhere else. But uh, uh, but civilians are being killed by these, and uh, and the uh, numbers are quite uh, startling. Of course, I mean, besides the civilian death toll caused by these airstrikes, I mean, you spoke of uh, the fact that this uh, plan was secret. I mean, be it secret or non-secret, overt or covert, I mean, it has to have, it has to follow an objective, a goal. What is that goal, do you think? Well, the goal is, uh, particularly in Pakistan, because we cannot uh, go into the country with boots on the ground, uh, uh, as such, uh, the, the idea then is to reach out and, and uh, try to hit uh, targets at, at a distance. And uh, if we were to uh, put troops into Pakistan, uh, it would create tremendous uh, uh, problems and uh, difficulties. And uh, from the U.S. standpoint, that's where uh, the, the uh, terrorists uh, that are attacking in Afghanistan are, are uh, using as refuge. And, um, and of course, the United States uh, believes that it's uh, with the complicity of the Pakistani government, uh, particularly their inter-service intelligence directorate, that uh, is actually uh, uh, protecting these uh, terrorists, like the Haqqani Network and, uh, and and the Afghan Taliban, which uh, go back and forth in the um, in the uh, in the in the tribal areas to uh, from the tribal areas to att to attack U.S. troops in Afghanistan. So consequently, they're going to be, uh, in order to hit these sanctuaries, they're going to be uh, using the drones. Now, there had been some uh, discussion that um, uh, this is being done with a complicit uh, view of the Pakistani government with the idea that they will complain publicly uh, if, if uh, these attacks occur, and that is to give them some, some sense of independence. So there has been some 
understandings between the United States and Pakistani government to uh, 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 not admit that, uh, uh, that, that, that the Pakistani government is somewhat complicit in, in these attacks. And then that gives uh, the government of Pakistan plausible denial uh, when uh, these attacks occur. And then they can get out and publicly uh, condemn these attacks, which they're doing. And uh, now in order to carry out these drone strikes, I mean, the U.S. needs to fund them. Now, in the long run, what effect would such spending have on the U.S. itself? I mean, until when can it afford for the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and now this so-called drone war? Besides, I mean, they're costing America's reputation. Well, the, relatively speaking, the drone war is probably cheaper than committing uh, uh, tens of thousands of troops over uh, an extended period of time given the logistical supply lines that they're having to pay for. So this is actually a, a cheaper way of doing it. The technology is such that they can uh, guide these uh, drones from halfway around the world. They, they've got to be, ta they, they have to take off from a nearby location, but they can be guided from uh, uh, well within the United States if, if need be. Uh, chances are they're probably guided uh, from, uh, from somewhere in uh, Europe or, or uh, or in bases that are close to uh, uh, Middle East, but um, but uh, they 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 have the capability of being uh, guided to targets. But the problem is is being able to identify positively what those targets are half a world away, and that seems to be a, a growing issue. All right, uh, we'll leave it there for the time being. Uh, that was Michael Malouf, former Pentagon official, joining me live from Washington. Many thanks for your thoughts and opinion there, sir.